What is up, YouTubers, gamers, and hobbyists, and welcome. It's here. It's finally here. The P&Q birthday special. The P&Q 50th birthday special. Now, I have to admit to something. It's not actually my birthday today, but it is tomorrow at the time of recording this. That's right. This is Tuesday the 23rd of March. Tomorrow is Wednesday the 24th of March, 2021. And tomorrow is my birthday. So, if you are watching this on my actual birthday, thank you. Because <laughs> we are here, we are raising the frequencies and raising the vibrations, and I've got the door open, the sounds of nature and life coming in, and breathing in that good-ass prana, baby. Shout out to Ralph Smart, and we are good to go. Now, look at this, people. I've got a ton of questions. Thank you to everybody who gave me questions or comments or something to talk about. Now, so a quick question to myself from myself. Pete, how are you going to do this? Well, Pete, I'm going to do this however I want to because it's my birthday. Or at least it is tomorrow. So I've got a load of questions here at the start from various sources emails, video calls, and I think one of them might have even been from across the road, actually. Was that was that this one? I don't know. Anyway, time goes so fast, I don't know what day it is. Anyway, anyway, here we are. So, thank you as well for casting your vote on what the next RPG campaign genre should be at the moment. It's looking like sci-fi at the moment you can keep voting till it starts you can keep voting and then of course i'll put another one up at, at some time i'm going to do one um just for my patrons as well so if you want to become a patron and get exclusive videos and there'll be rpg exclusive content for you and there's lots of other things as well tutorials and uh, paint alongs behind the scenes if you want to check that out Head on over to my Patreon account, link in the home screen. Now, should we get on with this? I've got coffee as well. Uh, I don't know if it's cool enough to drink though, because it's in my awesome R2D2 mug, which I got for Christmas. And yes, you might not see it on camera because it's pure white, but it is a mini Warzone cap. Just about make out the uh, logo there. Yes, it is. Oh. That is still quite hot, but we're going to make a go of this. Okay, so the first question and this first bunch of questions, and I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly who it was. One of them was my brother. But I can't remember what question, who asked me what. But someone said, how do you feel to be having your 50th birthday? Well, there's a question, and I suppose it's the most obvious question, really, isn't it? How do I feel to be having my 50th birthday? I feel honoured to have made it this far. Um, I know a lot of people that didn't make it this far. They they checked out early, you know, and I'm and I'm I really miss them. I'm really honoured to have made it this far. The scary thing for me is that I'm only 14 years away from my father's age when he passed on. That's scary uh, because I, I I I look up to him even to this day, you know. Even 20, 30 years after he died, I still look up to him. I have this image that I want to live up to and hope I can make him proud. But how do I feel to be having my 50th birthday? I feel good. I feel good. I feel wise. A lot wiser than I once was. And yeah, I think I've developed some coping mechanisms uh, to help me with life. Oh, I feel that air coming, it's just gorgeous. And uh, I've turned my microphone down slightly so that hopefully it won't pick up too much interference like traffic and so on. Of course, if I get a delivery, I'm gonna stop the video and I will come right back. That's how it's gonna work today. Okay, that's another reason for having the door open. Okay, what is the hardest thing making videos in the current climate? And the 
context to that question is about, you know, the whole pandemic thing. The hardest thing about making videos in this current climate is I can't go outside and do outdoor ones as much as I used to, if at all, at the moment. I used to love going outdoors and filming outdoors, nature and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I like filming. That's the hardest thing for me about the current climate. I can't go on a journey to a friend's or, you know, uh, relatives, and I can't film that, you know, if I wanted to. I can't take a, can't take a day trip to uh, somewhere on the train or anything like that. I can't, I just can't do those things, but there you go. That's the, that's the hardest thing about making videos in the current climate, for me. Okay, can you say what you think the hardest part of painting a miniature is? The hardest part? Yes, I think I can. The hardest part for me about finishing uh, painting a miniature is, well, I've just said it, haven't I? Finishing. Finishing it. You get so far and then something else grabs your attention. Oh, I'd like to start painting that, perhaps. Yeah, that's the hardest part for me is, is, is getting distracted because I want to paint everything at once and be all done and have another lot instantly to ready to paint. That's, that's just the way it is. <clears throat> okay, so... The next question then, these are all from ones I can't remember who they were from. You seem to have taken to solo gaming rather well. What, if anything, do you attribute to this? Well, I attribute this to the current climate in the world today, this whole pandemic. That is what's kind of forced that, accelerated that, which was going to be an experimentation, has now brought that forward to become a necessity for me. So solo gaming is where it is. Okay, uh, next one. Now you are approaching the half century, will you be getting into historical? And if so, what? Are you saying I'm getting old? Are you say Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? This might have been from my brother. <laughs> if I was going to get into historical at the moment, it would be Romans. BC period Romans. I don't know enough about them, but um, I would say Romans. So, you know, you might see that in the future from me, Romans. Yeah, why not? Sure. Okay, here's one. What sort of music would you say is timeless? Timeless music. Well, of course, I would say classical music is timeless. It is timeless. Some jazz music, some blues music. So I'm going to say three things, uh, you know, three sorts. Classical, jazz and blues are timeless. Other stuff, rock, pop, kind of ages. Metal, it ages. Nothing wrong with it, and I love it, but it does age. Okay, uh, that's a good question. Talk about a time when you were really happy. Every day, every day, I'm happy right now. And that is the absolute honest truth i am happy right i'm 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 really happy to be doing this my p and q birthday special i see from the background of a lot of your videos you're into flames of war tell us a little bit about that oh i got into flames of war i was intrigued by flames of war i've seen a lot of people do it on their channels and it's 15 millimeter as well. Although you can play them in all sorts, can't you? But um, uh, I mean, I suppose you could play it in 28 mil if you really wanted to. But then a lot of people that play bolt action transfer it down to 15 mil. I thought the models were so cute, and the price was unbelievably cheap compared to uh, the bigger scale models. So yeah, that's what got me into that. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I bought a couple of box sets. They were quite good to get into. Um, I like the tanks more than I like the infantry and stuff. I found I don't. I hate painting the fifteen millimeter infantry and the, the the little men. I hate painting those. They are they're just finicky, <laughs> fiddly. You, it's too easy to lose bits for them. But yeah, they they, they do look cool when they're done. Uh, I much prefer the tanks and things. They, they are gorgeous. Love that. 
that's all I can really tell you about Flames of War, really. I, at some point, I will be coming back to it, and, and I'll probably be playing it. Um, you know, if the world ever gets back to normal, might might play it with some friends. Who knows? Anyway, that, believe it or not, is just the first page of many. Ah, now. Now we come on to questions where I can attribute the author. Okay. So I had an email from Frost and Fists. It says, I uh, hope I'm not too late to enter the PQ. Here are a few questions I wanted to contribute. Okay. Let's see how we go with these, shall we? Okay, he says, I love the work you've been doing with aliens lately. As an ultimate badass yourself, which of the Marines would you have been in Aliens 2? Which of the Marines would I have been in Aliens 2? Ooh, that's a good question. Hmm. I would have been either Apone, the sergeant. Sadly, he uh, died quite soon, but um, he was a bit of a badass. Didn't take no stick from anybody. I'd either have been him. Hmm. Or Drake. Because he was pretty badass, too. You know, he had the big smart gun. He had the scar down his face, and yeah, you know, really cool. Yeah, Apone or Drake. You know the ones? Those two. Either of those. Okay, he says, I'm so hyped for your sister's army. What draws you to the faction? What do you like about them? I like... I've got them behind me and I'm working on them right now. I like the whole sisterhood thing. I like their faith. They are very strong in their faith. They have great flowing robes and amazing outfits their law their background law is very very detailed and well thought out i don't know especially in ninth edition how um, how how competitive they are but i guess i'm going to find that out soon enough once i get back into it like get all the rules up to date and uh, in in there in my noggin i i i just like them i don't i can't i don't know it could have been a a genius stroke of genius marketing on uh, games workshop's part i don't know that where they ignored them for so long in so many years that it made you know it probably made people want and hunger for them more and i think a, a little bit of that applies to me i do um but, you know, what the heck? Okay. <laughs> Hope that answers that for you. All right. He says, Some of the best role-playing game sessions are when a seemingly normal circumstance or an NPC that was just a background character takes a life of its own due to the role-play interactions of your awesome gaming group. <laughs> Tell us about a time that things went off the rails in one of your role-playing games and turned into a great game in memory that was never planned. Okay, actually started in a after school D and D group. So the gaming group was quite large, involving uh, obviously myself as a player and many other people from many other different classes. Or, you know, like don't, you know that's what they call them classes. We have divided into classes in school. And uh, the, the the DM who was running it, who's actually went on later to run our our more personalised gaming group, and years later, as we grew into adults, still stuck with it. One of the best DMs I've ever known, called Mark, and he he created this befuddled wizard type character. Okay, and he took the name from the Dragonlance books. Fisben, do you remember him? You, you, I would assume you know who Fisben is, because yeah, you're into Dragonlance as well. So he, he based him on him, Fisben. So he was just, he was a wizard, right? But he was totally nuts, totally off his head. And I can still remember the introduction. Our party, large as it was, we were kind of near a river. We're on, well, we're on a bridge, actually. Just a small 
bridge and there's this little raft bobbing along down the river towards us and this character this npc he was called fisbon he was singing a life on the ocean waves yeah life on the ocean waves da, 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 da. and one of the younger uh, players from a different he was from a different class he thought it would be fun to throw a dagger at him. <laughs> Why, I don't know. Now, as he's bobbing down the river, he, he goes, life on the ocean wave, blah, 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 blah. Hello. And um, this kid said, I'll throw my dagger at him. He threw his dagger, he rolled his dice. You know, so, and the I can't remember whether this Fisman character used magic to stop the dagger or he just caught it or it was probably magical uh, given the nature of his character and he just carried on and we were like dude what did you do that for <laughs> the funny thing was he kept turning up out throughout our adventure not just throughout our adventure but in further games, when we became a more personalised group, to the RDM and a smaller but a group of us took it upon ourselves to carry on. <laughs> but the DM kept introducing him through, throughout the whole entire campaign, which lasted a long time. I suppose while we were at school, it lasted about a year. But every time he would turn up, he would say, Hello, and he'd throw a dagger at us. <laughs> that would be his... Because he thought it was our method of communicating hello. Hello. Funk. And he kept throwing it at this, this kid's character. You got, well, peeved off with it. We were like, well, you know, you know, you reap what you sow, baby. But he kept on doing it. Um, for years later, I'm like, dude, this, this, this wasn't us. We never did that to you. Please stop throwing daggers at us. He said, ah, I'm just saying hello funk and hilarious as with all role-playing stories you know you really had to be there but um yeah so that was that's one of my favorite and that was totally never planned all right romance plots he says now another question romance plots are great in video games building up a relationship with a character but they can lead they, they can be a little awkward in tabletop games can't they Yes, they can. Have you ever had one of your characters falling in love during a tabletop game? Have you ever had to GM for a character that was falling in love or simply trying to get their groove on? Tell us the stories. Well, I haven't I haven't had to DM or GM for a... Not really... I wouldn't say romance. I haven't had to GM for a character that was falling in love with another character. My character in a and d game fell in love with another character. Um which was DM'd again by Mark. Uh, same same world as the one that we had the Fisbin story from. And he fell in love with this... Uh, who, who could I describe her as? Um, I don't know, like a female assassin type. And he fell in love with her and it turned out she was a, a princess in, in re reality. And... And my character just got caught up in the whole, he'll do anything for her, you know, much to the uh, eye rolling of the other players. And I'm like, no, I've got to go, we've got to go and save her because, you know, you know, my character's in love with this character, uh, in with whatever she's called. <laughs> I can't remember the name. It was about, you know, it was about 35 years ago. So you forgive me if I don't remember the name of the wasn't a big big character but I would go my character would go dashing off on fool ass quests to to kind of save this character and of course my buddies would end up having to tag along and bail me out of what various scrapes that I would end up in and um yeah and my our, our DM he he played the character very well very flirty and oh you know and you know, you save me and all this kind of thing. And my character was just like, no, nah, yeah. And I think 
a lot of that was because I was so young at the time. I'd never experienced love and, you know, real love. You know, I mean, some people never experience real love, do they, in, in life? But I was certainly too young to have experienced real love at that point. So I kind of, I don't know, maybe I experimented with it in a fictional way. But yeah, it does lead to some awkward moments, though. I, uh, I grant you. He says, uh, okay, next question. You're getting back into Warhammer this year in a big way. I challenge you to do at least one epic conversion or count as or proxy, etc. for a special character. Mm. Do something to talk streaks out. You're challenging me to do that this year. Hmm, I'd have to really look at that. I've certainly got the materials to kind of build stuff. I'm going to give that some serious thought. I think it might be easier for me to build something Necrony. Necrons, because they've got a more, I don't know, I think I'm better at building a sort of artificial, robotic-y kind of looking whatever it's going to be, a uh, character f for that. Hmm. Okay, so, yeah. So that was the questions Mephos left me on this email. I believe he's left me some other ones as well. Uh, okay, so on to the next page. Next we have Wargaming with Gary. How's it going, Gary? I hope all is well with you. It's hi, Pete. The big 5-0, LOL. My question... What are your favourite type of figures to paint and why? All the best, Gary. Favourite type of figures to paint? I suppose 28 mil infantry or 32 mil infantry. Round about that size, you know. The standard sort of infantry type figure. They're my favourite types of figures to paint by far. Although that said... If I want to go, if I want to narrow it down even further, I suppose monsters are my favourite, absolute favourite. I mean, take Dave, the dragon. My absolute favourite type of model to paint is that kind of thing, you know, uh, monsters, aliens, and that. That's what that's what drew me to Tyranids in the first place in Warhammer. Cause they were my first real love for an army was Tyranids because aliens in space. All right. Um. Yeah. So aliens or infantry? Well, as it's my birthday, I'm going to have them both. I'm going to have aliens and I'm going to have infantry. All right. Next is from the miniature painter. How's it going, Justin? It says, hi, Pete. Happy soon-to-be birthday. Thank you very much. A question. If you could own a model 28mm or bigger of any person to be able to paint, who would it be? Hmm. Of any person, wow. Um, I suppose it would have to be Mrs. Minnie Warstone, my wife. Mm. Yes. And I'd never get it perfect. I would always be trying to tinker with it, you know, to finalise it. Yes. You got me thinking, you know. Might, you know, get a, maybe a bust done or something. Oh, yeah. Cool idea. All right. All right. Here's a question that came from the, the board game captain. It says, an interesting format with these sectional deep dives. That, and he's talking about my uh, deep dives into the Alien RPG game because that's what the comment was left on. He says, I'll have to keep watching it. Out of curiosity, why isn't your subscriber count visible? Anyway, great vid. Subscribed. I take it my subscriber count is not visible at the moment. I don't know. Sometimes I I go through, I do something, I, I either take the subscriber count off or I put it back on just out of, out of curiosity. Sometimes it, excel it seems to accelerate the subscriber count rise. I don't know. I don't even know. If, is it not visible at the moment? 
Excuse me. Well, at the time of recording this, I'm on, what, 2,740 something subscribers. I never thought I'd get to 100 in the old days. So to be here at this point is absolutely amazing. It really is. Um, right, moving on. Oh, another miniature painter question. It says, very cool, chill and chat, Pete. If we are on a simulation, the question is, would you reset the simulation? I'll answer that with another question. The question is, how do we know we've not been reset already? We could have been set right now, 10 seconds ago, an hour ago, and all memories could be just implanted. We wouldn't know, would we? Ah, eh? Yeah? Moving on to Jamjar34 says, yeah, boy. Great one, Sir Pete. Yes, Sisters of Battle. So what do you plan for your Sisters of Battle army? Go through your thoughts and ideas. Looking forward to this. Keep it spicy. Well, I'll do my best, sir, to keep it as spicy as you do. I need a sip of coffee for this one. Well, I've got, I've got my Battle Sisters. Um, they're good to go. I've got some Seraphim. I need some vehicles for them, that's true. I'm, I've got some Inquisitors, which are going to, you know, tag along with them as part of their, their, their cause. I'm going to get some Priests. Um, on those, all of those ones, Flagellants, the ones that are, you know, like bad people, um, kind of brought back need some of those I can't remember them sorry the name of them it's gonna be a year of a lot of um, research I think but yes so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna start by showcasing what I have with them and then I'm gonna do I've, I did a back along um, you know uh, my Tyranid army showcase I think I want, the plan was always to, to do a, a showcase of each of my armies, like the whole lot, everything I've got for that army, and just show it off. I think I want to do that. So there's going to be a lot of setting up time, but watching Nick Edick Beer's um, recent video on how he stores his models, because he's moving house at the moment, isn't he? So he's... He's having to store all his uh, models up and he's using the really useful box um, format to do that with and magnetizing them to the, the boxes and that. So, they don't fall so I'm going to use that because I thought I watched that video and I thought, oh, that is so cool. That gave me so many ideas about how I could restore my current, um, my, my, my current army collection and how I can, whilst I'm getting them out, I, I might as well I'll do a, a, a like a showcase of them because I'm getting them out anyway. Um, and it's going to take a long time to do to magnetize my whole lot because none of my army has magnets. None of them. I, I've, I've just bought a few magnets to, to start me off with, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna start doing it. But I'm going to start with Sisters of Battle, you see. And perhaps with each update of my Sisters of Battle, I can impart some new information that I found out about them. Because I'm painting my sister. I could, I just, in the end, I just couldn't decide on what order to paint them as. So I've, I'm painting them as a neutral kind of colour so that I can proxy them as any order, whatever order I see fit at the time. True, it does mean I can't put certain decals on them, but yeah, it's the way it goes, you know. So yeah. All right, I hope that is spicy enough. I know it's not up, you know, up to the Spice Master's uh, spiciness, but uh, we'll try. Okay, thank you for that as well. Okay, Edic Beer 40k, Necrons and more. It says, good luck with getting the apprenticeship. Oh, I really hope I do. Come on, baby. Come on, universe. Feels so good to be alive. Come on. 
<sighs> Reaving in that good ass prana, baby, and it's coming to me. Get on the right vibrational frequency of what I want now, and be grateful for what I have. He says, "Happy birthday!" For when it comes. It's, it's ticking away. It's almost there. It's, it's, you know, the day before. I've got another year before the big half century. What has been your favourite birthday so far? It's always the one I'm in. So it's going to be this one. It, and I know it will be because we're going to have such a good time. We're going to be playing Alien. We might even be playing Tales from the Loop, the RPG. Uh, that's just the family and me, of course. And... We're having takeout and watching movies and we're going to do, you know, just going to do a little mini party. So this this one is going to be my favourite. I'm having a cake similar to the one I had last year. So up until this point, last year's birthday was my favourite. Even though it's my second birthday in lockdown. Yes. <laughs> and I, I don't care. I'm, I've reached the golden age. 50 is the golden age, I think. My 50s are when I'm going to be most proactive and, and productive and creative. Yes. Wow, that was a big answer. So, yes, this one coming tomorrow. All right. Good luck with the move, by the way. Hope it all goes smoothly for you. I know it can be a bit stressful at times, I know for moving and uh, you know it's going to come for me at some point so uh, you know fingers crossed for you and uh, hopefully when the time comes for me to move it that will go as smoothly as well we're back to jam jar 34 okay so it's great video pete what's your favorite dark angel model that you have painted <sighs> that's a toughie i think is Cypher. The metal one. I think there's a plastic one now. But Cypher. I don't know what it was about him. I I like him and I like his lore, his backstory, his, you know, his shit. Because the Dark, I mean, the Dark Angels are pretty secretive anyway, but he's even more sort of shady and mysterious, isn't he? So, yeah, Cypher for sure. Okay, we're on to who took my dice. So I just can't remember if I already got questions in. Ah, well, here we go. One, your favourite non-GW miniature war game. That's got to be Congo. Congo, for sure. Two, how has your hobby helped you get through the lockdown mess? It... keeps me feeling connected on YouTube but then again the only reason I do YouTube is because of my hobby so in a way my hobby keeps me connected to you guys it calms my mind enables me to focus on that what I'm painting playing a game raises my vibrations you know, even these stressful RPG games I can play, that raises my vibrations and makes me feel good. And yeah, before I know it, time has just gone. It makes time pass quicker. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But yeah, I would say that is how. All right. Back to Wargaming with Gary. He says, happy birthday, Peter. Question one. Did you get any goodies for your birthday? Well, I haven't had any yet. But I know Mrs. Mini Warzone and my daughter have gone all out this year. Because if it wasn't, if we weren't in a lockdown, we weren't in a global pandemic, we would very likely have gone to... The biggest possibility on the bucket list was to go to the Colosseum and see the uh, the ancient Colosseum and have a tour there. Yeah, so take a trip, probably abroad, 
that was what we were going to do. But because you can't do that, and you know, Mrs. Mini Warzone, it was, I mean, all those years ago, we went to Florida for her birthday. So we were going to go abroad somewhere for mine. If not that, we would have gone back to Florida because we loved it so much. But that's not going to be possible now. So, yeah, you know, those are the breaks. Um, but they've gone all out to get me lots of lots of gifts. I have a strong feeling there's going to be something hobby goodness in there somewhere for me. I do. Uh, Mrs. Mini was in giving me that kind of nod you might have yeah <laughs> so we'll see we'll see you know may, maybe i'll have something to unbox hey do another video for you all uh two what are your thoughts on 3d printing or the best guy 3d printing well there's a good question i think we're at the stage now where 3d printing can be utilized very effectively in our hobby I've seen the best thing is it was always better for terrain in the beginning. And you didn't have another sip of coffee a moment. Oh, that was good. I need to keep the caffeine, you know, fueling my, my brain. It was always better for terrain, but now from what I've seen, the terrain matches anything you can buy pre made, I think. I've seen some really good 3D printed terrain. I mean, really good yes you've got to buy it still we can still get some really cool free uh, free stuff is it going to be on a par with the kind of plastics we get now from the likes of games workshop maybe not not yet nearly nearly i i don't know i don't know too much about it i mean my friend ralph has got a 3d printer and you've seen some of the the cool stuff he's done with it I think you need a bit of space for it. Takes a bit of um, takes up a lot of workroom workspace at the moment, and a bit more work involved. You got to clean them all off and all that good stuff. So uh, there's always going to be some people that are, you know, me included, a little bit lazier. I'd rather just buy it and you know just buy it and glue it together and or paint it up and whatever and I'm good to go. Will I get a 3D printer in the future? Very likely. Not yet. But I will. But but not not yet. You know I, I'm still waiting. When they first came out I was like, yeah, I'm gonna wait until they come down in price, till they get easier, more everybody's using them. When it comes to the stage of the likes of GW and you know Warlord Games and that are saying you can't buy our models from our factories now. You've just got to download the the programs and print them off yourself. Then obviously it's time to get a a three D print. I don't think that'll happen for a while yet, though. <laughs> but yeah, I think three D printing is a very good a good thing. I think that's like one step away from uh, um, those um, replicators they used to have in Star Trek. Thank you. Great, great question. <laughs> Got more questions. Mini Walmart is next. Hey Brian. Says nice chill video, Pete. When you decide to return to 40k, what projects will you dive into? Well You already know I'm diving into Sisters of Battle right now. I'll probably be diving into Either Tyranids or Space Marines or Necrons. Yeah, because I have to have them all. You know, I have all those armies. So it'll be something along those lines. I mean, I've got some towel, but not enough to call an army. Uh, also says, also, are there any indie miniature games that pique your interest? And what are your thoughts about historical wargaming? What is your opinion of the new Aliens game? Happy birthday, Pete, keep at it, and I hope the job situation turns out for the best. So do I. So do I, my friend. Well, there's a lot of indie games I I, uh, I like. I mean, I like Ronin, as you know. That's a bit of an indie game. I, I've got a fistful of Kung Fu. That's pretty interesting. 
There's a pirate one too. I um, forget the name of that. On the Seven Seas, is it? I think. Something like that. The Aliens board game. Another glorious day in the core. It's amazing. That's all I can say. I love it. I love it. Very tension filled. It feels like Aliens. I can't. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, I've done a couple of playthroughs, as you know. Um, I can't believe I'm going to be 50. <laughs> I feel every day of it. <laughs> um, I didn't get that job I had the interviews for when you wrote this question. But I got other ones in the pocket, so that's the ones I'm I'm hoping hoping for. The one I want the most is, of course, my apprenticeship with uh, the same company that my wife works for. Then, you know, we can get lifts to work together and perhaps we can come home together. It'd be really cool. Yeah, I mean, when you... I finally found... When you wrote this... This was two weeks ago now. You wrote this, I think, or maybe three weeks ago. When you wrote that comment. I only found out the day after you wrote it that I didn't get that job. But... Hey ho, it was disappointing, but it's all practice for the job I'm meant to be in, right? And the more time goes by, the more qualified I'm going to be. So there is that. Thank you for your questions. Uh, Cruange Silicus is next, and he says, Happy birthday, Pete. Thank you very much, sir. Question for the p &Q. What license slash film? Slash pop culture, slash book, etc. Do you wish they would make a miniatures game from? Easy! My wife's books. Her trilogy is complete now. She's done with that. She's started a new, uh, a new fictional book now. And that's my dog barking. I'm going to come back. Well, I'm back. That was something at the door for me. <sighs> Something's arrived for me. It's that football I was after. <laughs> this is a gift from a, a friend of mine, an old school friend. Used to, used to come down here a lot. He lives in Liverpool. He's building a guitar for me. He, he's obviously, he's built it. And he sent it to me. So that is who was at the door. So I got that as a birthday gift from my good friend. A new guitar. Well, it's actually uh, a tribute guitar to Eddie Van Halen's uh, guitar. So thank you very much. He's called Mark as well. <laughs> you're watching this Mark wow dude thank you so much I am going to unwrap that with care later wow I'm blown away okay so we're still on this question yes my wife's books a knight of Phalar, parallax and rise of the alpha they would make a phenomenal setting for a miniatures uh, game a phenomenal setting you got all sorts of characters in there, things. You got humans and obviously supernatural creatures. You got angels and demons and werewolves and vampires and ghosts and all kind of stuff. You got cybernetics. You got, you know, robots, AIs. You got it all right there in that trilogy. That is what I wish they would make a, a miniatures game from. on the subject of games, uh, you know, things to make games from, things that have had games made for them in the past, but no longer have games for them. They've got a miniatures game for Judge Dredd, which is cool, and I might check that out. I might, might do. Um, but, but they used to do an RPG for it, Back in the day, back in the 80s, when I was a lad at school, they used to do a, uh, an RPG for it, and it was phenomenal. But it is, 
ridiculous, stupid money now. So I wish they'd do a new one sometime, some company, perhaps Free League Publishing could. And another game I wish they would redo is Doctor Who as an RPG. Yeah, you got the, uh, the Exterminate War game from Warlord. But I wish they'd do an RPG of Doctor Who. Perhaps you could have other sort of Time Lords or before the Time Lords, you know, went, you know. So you could play Time Lords. It's a, t it's a time game. You're playing any time. Come on. You know, somebody do it. Free League, do that. <laughs> I, like, I like the Free League publishing uh, dice mechanic. But thank you, Crodula Silicus, for that. It's good to know you're still watching. And we're back to the miniature painter. Oh, you can hear those birds singing. That is awesome. Oh, I love summer and sunny days. I love it. So back to the miniature painter. He says, hi, Pete. A question. Would you or have you been to a convention like Salute or any convention? Stay safe, mate. Yes, I have. I've been to Salute a couple of times and I've been to a couple of other conventions as well. Um... Some of them have been recorded. If I remember, I'll put the links in the description below or up in the corner. I'll put something somewhere. Look for it. Yes, I have. Salute. The first time I, the first time I went to Salute, I actually saw Nick at Ick Beer. But I got, kind of got lost going around. I thought, I want to come back to him later because he was at a booth. He was selling stuff um, for... Help the heroes, I think it was. Um, but by the time I'd gone around and looked at everything, I'd, you know, my, dis you know, distracting, my distraction brain, here, there, and everywhere. By the time I got around to it all, it was time to go home because it's many hours journey to get back to Plymouth, where I live, by train. I mean, I have to live at like stupid three o'clock in the morning or something ridiculous like that just to get there for like midday. You know, with the trains and everything. In the underground, but anyway, so yeah, I, I have been. Uh, would I go again? Yeah, probably would at some point. But the only thing with salute is it costs so much for me to get there and so much time taken up. I'd probably go to a smaller convention if it was closer, or any convention if it's closer. I mean, salute is big, I don't think that's going to be happening, you know, anytime soon, is it? Salute. Uh, the Games Expo I was always going to go to. Um, I think that was in the NEC. Uh, but, but I would have gone there. Um, even if it meant spending you know, overnight in a, like a travel lodge or, or, lodge or something. Uh, just, just for the experience. But yeah. Yep. So yeah, I hope that answers your question there. Right, back to Frost and Fitz. Hey, buddy. So it's a great update, Pete. Happy, uh, happy upcoming birthday to you. Thank you so much. Did you get my questions via email? Yes, I did. Also, here are, here are a few more. One, how are you enjoying your PowerPoint course? My co-workers have told me before that PowerPoint is my best medium. I love PowerPoint. It's the best course I've done so far. I'm still doing it. I'm not long. I'm not that far into it. I'm, you know, still getting the basics down. But man, I love it. What a great tool. Fantastic. More interesting than the other ones as well. I mean, I liked Word. I liked Excel. Outlook was a bit meh. I did it, but it was a bit more of a chore, that one. But PowerPoint. Mm, very good. Love it. Yes, and that answers your second question. Now, of all the office courses you've taken so far, which one is your favourite? PowerPoint is proving to be my favourite thus far. Oh. Which is your favourite Doctor out of the classic ones? Which is your favourite Doctor out of the new ones? Mine is Tennant followed by Eccleston and Smith. I didn't see much of the classics, unfortunately. I wish I'd seen... I wish they had been more prevalent on the channels I watched when I was a kid. I'm, Of course, I'm privileged to have watched them growing up as well. So, well, for me, the... the uh, the classic ones that's easy it's tom baker by far he was the david tennant of the classic era he was brilliant he was so out there brilliant absolutely brilliant 
Um, new ones. Tenant is a strong favourite. I'd I'd go with you. Tenant followed by Eccleston. It's a shame Eccleston Christopher Eccleston didn't make another series or two. Really, he could have prolonged that a bit more. I think he was a great doctor. I haven't seen much of Matt Smith. I've seen some, but I'm I'm starting again from Christopher Eccleston onwards, and I'm looking into getting some of the old ones. I've got Genesis of the Darks, Tom Baker era, on its way to me now. You can get some of them real cheap. Uh, yeah. How did you arrive at such an interesting colour scheme for your sisters? I bet they're going to look stunning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Keep up the great work and happy birthday once again, my young friend. Oh. oh the colour scheme for my sisters... These colours I like working with, I suppose. And some colours that I wanted to incorporate from some orders, but not as I definitely didn't want to be painting black armour. I knew that. I, I, I can do black, like, you know, my death watch and things. I can do it, but I don't enjoy it. Mm. I want to be able to enjoy it. Because I love it, if that makes sense. I want, I want, I want to love doing what I'm doing. I don't want to be like, got to highlight this black, and it looks. Ugh. It's highlighting black doesn't look good at the time you're highlighting. It's not until way after you've finished it that it actually you start going, oh, that, that looks all right actually. But yeah, I think mean, it's a harsher realization of the end result yeah but um i just wanted to incorporate colors from some um, orders and like i say uh, uh, colors i enjoy working with. i enjoy working with blues and grays and i enjoy working with crimsons and reds i, I like them a lot so that really was my deciding factor thank you buddy Big Mech Danskar. Hey, bud, how's it going? Great to see you, Pete. You seem super chipper in this one. Thank you. I have a couple of questions for the P&Q. Ooh, here's an interesting one. People often ask, who is your favourite Doctor? But I'd like to know if you have a favourite TARDIS. This is super interesting. An interesting question. Because, do you mean... TARDIS as in a specific TARDIS model because there's different models of TARDIS do you mean TARDIS as the acronym uh, or the what it stands for the time and relative dimension in space which is my favorite time and relative dimension in space or do you mean the TARDIS interior or do you mean a personification of the TARDIS now all those things can apply to a TARDIS. My, start with the obvious one. My, my favourite time and relative dimension in space is right here, right now, baby, because now is where it's at. Live for now, live in the present, don't live in the past. That can be a bit of a, uh, I wouldn't say weakness of mine or failure of mine, but it can be something I can slip into sometimes. When I, we all get nostalgic the more older we get, and I'm, I, I suffer with it quite badly, nostalgia. I can be like really into it. Then I just remember, pick myself up and remember, slap myself about a bit. Say, Pete, live in the present. Now is all that matters. As for my favourite model TARDIS, well, it's got to be the Doctor's TARDIS. That Model 40 TARDIS, um, which is malfunctioning you know it, it wasn't even on the original official list so i i suspect and you know doctor who fans all over the world can sort of say no, no 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 that's wrong but i heavily suspect that it was a prototype that never got brought into service um i mean it was 
it was malfunctioning from the moment he got it because that's why it was in the workshops of Gallifrey because of the malfunctioning chameleon circuit. So when he, he initiated the chameleon circuit to become a police box you know, for the 1950s, uh, it got stuck in that. Um, uh, now, if you're talking about my favorite interior for the TARDIS, hmm. I'd have to go for the classic originals, like with, uh, you know, Tom Baker and Peter Davidson the interiors. You know, that real stark, plain. And let's not forget everything in the TARDIS, the chairs, everything, except for the clothes in the wardrobe, is organic. Because TARDISes are grown. They are a living thing. Sentient thing. I'm getting deep here now. Uh, uh, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I think I've answered all of them. Two, you may be aware uh, that I'm attempting to paint 365 miniatures this year. And so far, I'm roughly keeping up the pace of one mini per day. How many minis have you painted so far this year? Do you know what the greatest amount you've painted in a year is? No, I started to do that last year when Mifos challenged me to do it, or he, he suggested I do it. I, but I lost count rapidly. I would say I'd be looking at maybe... 200 in a year maybe don't know how many I've painted this year nowhere near uh, enough to be able to do that nowhere near as many as I had last year because last year I painted the uh, zombicide was it angry neighbors It was one of the Zombicide, the original Zombicide, and I'm squinting, so I'm looking, I'm trying to see it, but I can't, it's behind something else. I painted up a Zombicide set, and that was about, you know, like about 80 minutes or something crazy like that, so I was off to a bumping start last year. Not, not so much this year. So, yeah, but I think possibly the greatest amount I've ever painted has got to be about 200. All right, back to Jam Jar 34. This is a nice video, Pete. Big spicy birthday to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. With doing the solo role playing, what's your take on the feedback from people watching the videos you do? I love myself. It's been fantastic. People have given really positive comments towards me. People seem to like it. They enjoy it. They they want they want more. If you're thinking of doing it, just give it a go. Just do it. It's 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 a blast. It really is a blast. I lo and I love it. And I'm gonna keep doing it. I, I just think it's fantastic. It's I mean role playing itself is something you don't actually need miniatures for. The fact that I, I have I do miniatures and paint miniatures for my role playing games is, is like another hobby in, in in one. But you don't actually need them. And you can get away with counters and things. Oh, itchy head. Haha. <laughs> oh, that air. Still, still gorgeous. Right. Um, yeah. So it's been very, very positive, actually. And uh, I'm pleased with that because, like I say, I am intending to do more. And we're on to our final question. The last one comes from Wargamer with Gary. You've got the final say, sir. So it's very nice, Peter. This is such a good project. Another question, if you don't mind. What is your favourite alien movie? Loving the dragon. All the best, Gary. And I'm loving the dragon too. Right. Sip of coffee. My favourite alien movie. Might surprise some of you. My favourite alien movie is Alien 3. The one where they, where Ripley crash lands on the, uh, the penal colony. <laughs> I think the best movie was Aliens, you know, the second one. But my fav, my personal favourite is the third one. And that's purely because it was the last movie I got to see with my father before he passed away. And so it sticks in my mind. So sentimental reasons, I really, for that one. But I think the best movie out of all of them was the second one. And I've got them all on DVD. Got a nice box set, you know, sort of alien egg kind of thing. 
and uh, yeah, I think the uh, the second one was the best movie. And if I hadn't watched the third one with my dad before he died, it would be the second one. But I did. I watched the third one with him, and so that for me, because we shared that time watching that movie, just the two of us, and it was a, he was dying of cancer. It was just a time, just me and him, bonding together, sharing a, a moment, a memory, a moment in time. Like we are sharing a moment in time, right now. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I, I always, whenever I think of my father, I have fond memories. Because I had such a good childhood growing up. I was one of the blessed ones. And, um... Yeah, I, I aspire to be like him every day. I know I don't reach it, but it's the, the effort that is the important thing, right? So, yeah. So, that marks the end of my P&Q 50th, 50th birthday special. And it was, I got a gift arrived whilst I did it in the form of this guitar. Which I'm longing to unbox and unpack. Looking forward to that. I'll show it to you on another video sometime, or maybe my Patreons, because it's not uh, not so much hobby related. It's more it's more behind the scenes thing. So I'm gonna I'll do that for a, a Patreon uh, video. If you want to check out my Patreon, anybody from as little as a dollar a month, you get different levels. You know, one through to seven, I believe it is, and each level will give you access to more types of videos and it's all in there just just go on that select you select what one you want and hey presto off we go and yeah thank you for that i i really do appreciate the support from my patrons you'll see some names coming up on the screen now and it is people like that which give me hope in the world i, I I lost my faith in humanity for the longest of time, but there are good people out there and they help keep me going. They help help keep me being able to to, to, to put something back into the hobby. I mean, it was my Patreon which first got me my first green screen, for instance. So I haven't, I, I don't do green screen very often, but I do occasionally just to keep my hand in because it's fun, right? <laughs> and there'll be times when I need to do it. And, you know, all these things, you know, whether it's a, some more primer so I can get some more models painted and I can make some more tutorials for you. I can get some paints, you know, little things like that where I don't need to feel guilty about getting it because I, there's other things that I you know, need to, to, to allocate my finances to, like bills and things like that. You know, so it's, it's people like that which take away the guilt because this this is this is generated from the hobby, so I'm going to put back into the hobby, and, and that's the way I want to do it. Anyway, I think I've gone on for quite long enough in this video, but it is my birthday one, so you know, thanks for putting up with it this long. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Really, please like if you like this video. Please give it a thumbs up. You don't like it, thumbs down it. Just give it some feedback and that will help the YouTube algorithm sort out whether it's, you know, it's a video worth promoting or not. You know, <laughs> I've really enjoyed doing it though. Just remember to keep breathing in that prana baby, that life force. Go outside as much as you can. I'm gonna stand in the sun for a bit and uh, let the vitamin D enter my body, help raise my vibrations and raise my frequencies, raise my morale. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Remember all brushes lead to all. I'll see you on another video. Peace.